Well, hello, neighborhood teams. Today, we're talking about how technology can become a trap for so many of our families. And before we begin the study today, what we want to do is start out with a couple activities to just get your whole family involved and have a little bit of fun with today's topic. Did you know that in this world, there is a unique language that exists known as SMS? It stands for Short Message Service. It's how many people choose to communicate via text. SMS is how we abbreviate words in text format. So to test your SMS skills today, let's see how many of these you can decode. What we're going to do is we're gonna flash some abbreviations up on the screen. And then the answer will follow in just about three or four seconds. And as a group, just yell the answer out if you know what it stands for. We're gonna start out with some pretty easy ones and then they'll get a little bit harder as we go. So, good luck. All right, here's another game. Using a cell phone, we're going to see who has the fastest texting ability in the room. Everybody needs to take out their cell phones. If somebody doesn't have a cell phone, they can choose someone else in the room who you think is going to win this game. What you need to do is you need to pick two contestants from your group. You will see a sentence appear on the screen. And the object is simple here. The first contestant who finishes the sentence without any typos wins. You don't need to send it anywhere. You just need to hold your cell phone up in the air when you're done. And by the way, sorry, no uh, incomplete words or incomplete sentences. You have to completely write it out to win the game. Be somewhat creative as you pick contestants. Maybe a student versus an adult. I think there's this myth out there sometimes that students are always going to be better at this. And I think there's probably some adults in the group who can win this game. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give you 10 seconds to pick two contestants. And when the sentence appears on the screen, you go. But we're also going to need a keeper of the remote control. That person's job is to pause and allow the contestants to finish the round. Once a winner is determined, hit play. And we will move on to the next round. There will be three rounds in this contest. So go ahead and pick your contestants for round one. Well, hello, friends. I want to welcome all of our neighborhood teams to this brand new series called My Family. Before we dig into tonight's study, I want to let you know about an exciting opportunity coming during the week of October the 6th. We're going to be taking a break from our neighborhood teams and give families a time to just kind of connect with each other and connect with your neighbors. Over the next few weeks, we will invite you to post your ideas for a creative family function that you could do together during the final week of this study. We invite you to post your ideas on the site provided. We will then collect all of those ideas and create a PDF document that you can then download and print off and refer to during the week of your gatherings. We're so excited for what this series is going to do for you and your family. 
Well, friends, this past Friday, we challenged everyone at CCV with a media blackout day. And here's what I want you to do in your group. For the next few minutes, I want you to talk about your experience. How did you feel during this media blackout? What was the hardest part? When it comes to your cell phones and computers and things like this, did you miss it at all? Do you feel like you were more productive or less productive during this blackout? And what did you do to fill all the time when you weren't goofing around with your cell phone? It takes some time to talk about how the media blackout impacted your family. I don't know that I'm necessarily up to speed on how to do all the things that need to be done to protect my child. I try to find out about cyber things, um, or, you know, having passcodes, scanning my computer for websites that she may have gone to. But I think part of the problem is that we're not educated. I don't know that there's enough things out there for parents to learn about how your child is using social media. I honestly believe, I have no doubt in my mind, that technology is going to be the demise of humanity because the more technological we become, the more vulnerable we become to losing that technology. And if, if that technology suddenly didn't work, society as we know it wouldn't know what to do when just 100 years ago we lived by candlelight. You know, sometimes I get tired of people texting me. I just want to talk to you. I want to hear your voice. I think it distracts us. But I mean, also, like, if you have family that live really far away, it can help you connect with them in ways that you may not have been able to before. It's made it way worse. Everybody is distracted and torn apart, doing their own thing in every corner of the house. Nobody knows what's going on anymore. It's made it worse. I think just like everything else has to be done with moderation. I think if, if too much of it is going to completely zone, especially new generations out. But if you use it with moderation, it can actually be really helpful to, to a modern age. Okay. It, it won't happen. Every, I'm, I, I mean, my cell phone is like my life. My banking system's in there, my passwords. I pay all my bills online, I call. It's, it's, it's a tool, and you can't live without it. It's just the way it is. Oh my gosh, I could do it. You want it right now? Electronics are turned in at 10, at 10 p.m. Phones, internet, everything's off at 10. Our daughters, they're kind of limited to what they can do. Like, you know, you get your homework and everything done, you can have a half an hour to go on the internet and play games and do that kind of stuff, you know, per night. But kind of limited. And we have the TV in one separate room, never in the living room. So we can actually converse and do things in the main space and then just use that specifically when we, we really want to watch a movie or something like that. And no cable. No phone after like 10 o'clock. No TV after No technology at like social gatherings, like birthdays, dinners. Our computer is in a study in an open area where at least I know that if I am walking by, I can see. Um, I do have controls in place, scanning. I look at history of websites, um, those kinds of things. I go through the iPod. She thinks I don't know how to work it, but I do. And I look at any messages coming in, and I have, you know, the parental code set up on the TV. So outside of that, I don't, I don't know what else there is. Hiding my car keys as they get older, maybe, <laughs> you know. Well, hello again, neighborhood teams. This week in our study, we're talking about technology. And though it can be really good sometimes, it also can become a trap for our families. And so here's what I'd like you to do to get going. I want you to think about how many media devices you have in your house. I want you to just literally add them up. How many cell phones do you have? How many computers? How many TVs? How many gaming systems do you have in your house? And by the way, whoever has the most media devices in their house, you're probably some of the people who are going to benefit most from the study today. So let's go ahead. Let's add them up.
Well, I'm sure that some of you were probably absolutely shocked when you realized how many electronic devices you have in your homes. And so here's what I was wondering. When it comes to those electronic devices, do you have any house rules? What I mean is, do you have any rules that govern your home when it comes to things like watching TV or using your cell phone? Maybe rules like no technology at the dinner table or cell phones have to be off at a certain time at night. Do you have any of these house rules to govern your technology? If you do, take a moment and share those with each other.
What I would like to ask you to do now is to open in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. If you don't have a Bible with you, well, then you can look up that verse on your smartphone or on your iPad or something like that. I want to ask you to find one person in your group to read Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 out loud to the whole group. Well, when I think about that verse in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, the very first thing that comes to my mind is the fact that we are like a sponge. What I mean is whatever we absorb is what will eventually come back out of us. And that's why I think it's so important to really think about what we allow into our lives. You know, I hear a lot of times in our world and I hear in our families, I even hear in my family, I hear my kids saying things like, well, it's not that bad, Dad. I'm talking to my uh, children about maybe a song they downloaded from iTunes, and they say, well, it's not that bad. Or I'm talking to my son, Cole, about a new video game he wants to buy, and he starts out by saying, well, it's not that bad, Dad. And that's great that a lot of the movies and television shows and music that we listen to aren't that bad. But is that really the question? that Christians should be asking, is it that bad? I think the question we should be asking is, is it good? Is it good media to be taking into our lives? And it's probably for that reason that in all of our lives, as individuals and as families, we need these things called boundaries or guardrails. And when you set up these guardrails in your family, they can really help to keep you safe. I'm not sure what kind of guardrails you should have in your family. You can probably come up with some of those on your own, but let me just share a few that we have in my family. One would be that we have agreed upon some technology-free zones. There are certain times of day and certain places in our home where there's no technology. We've also agreed that we are sponges, that whatever we absorb, we know eventually is going to come back out of us. So we're really careful as a family about the kind of media that we allow into our lives. All right, friends, here's the takeaway for us today when it comes to technology. The bottom line is technology is amoral. What I mean by that is technology itself is not good and it's not bad. Technology is a lot like money. It all depends how you use it. So here's the assignment for you or your family this week. I want you to come up with some good, healthy boundaries or guardrails for your family that'll keep you safe and headed in the right direction in this constantly connected world. I want you to literally write out these guardrails sometime today or sometime this week and then bring them back with you next week to your neighborhood team so that we can discuss them together. Have a great week and thanks for being a part of this study.